All right, Anthony Collier says, to be saved, question number six, all we need to do is believe. And there's a question mark there. Uh, to be saved, all we need to do is believe. Like how I believed that Santa was real when I was younger, or is there more to this belief? Um, well, I think that any analogy to Santa is a poor analogy, Anthony, in my opinion, because Santa is a, a we all agree and know this is a fictional character that people lie to their children about to get them excited. I don't personally care for that practice. <laughs> I think it's weird. Um, I've always thought it was weird. Um, from the time I was like say six or something and figured out that Santa wasn't real. I was like, wait a minute, what? And I felt so stupid. Um, but uh, but yeah, the, the, the problem with that analogy is that the analogy is comparing belief in Christ to belief in Santa, not just belief in general, right? So you say to be saved, all we need to do is believe. I would say, yes, you need to believe, but, but believing in Santa wouldn't work because Santa's fake. So obviously I'm thinking Christ is real. He rose from the dead, that he's, he's, he's God who came and took our sin and shame and he suffered and died, right? To bring justice. And there may be symbolism there with the last question about the, uh, David's uh, child dying. Um, but the, uh, the idea here is that belief replaces works. That's the big teaching in the New Testament, that you believing in Christ replaces you doing the labor to restore your get your dignity and goodness and holiness before God. Instead, you trust in the one who does it for you. So is belief though merely intellectual? Like I believe that Jesus did come. I'm convinced he died and rose again. Therefore I'm saved. And the answer is no. Um, this belief is a, a, let's just call it a robust belief. The idea is that I'm believing and there's a sense of commitment in my heart with that belief. I don't just think it's true. I'm committing myself to the truth of it. And I, I think that we understand the difference of that naturally. And I, I would never use the Santa analogy. Uh, kids can't rely on Santa the way we can rely on Jesus. So the things you're believing about Santa as a child when you're being deceived about him is are, are not comparable to the things you believe about Christ. Because believing about Santa are just sort of facts and you're hoping he brings you presents in the morning kind of stuff, but the belief doesn't have any effect and it's in a fake, uh, you know, legend. Whereas the belief in Christ has an effect and it's based upon truth. So I, I just don't like that analogy. The more to this belief though <clears throat> is genuine commitment. And this is why we say that works or good, you know, good deeds, they follow, they don't bring salvation, but they follow salvation. Because with salvation, you have genuine trust in Christ. Then you have Jesus who, re who you know, brings you to life spiritually, empowers you. And if you're really trusting in him, you're really relying on, you're really turning to him with your heart, with, your, with real trust and belief, full, robust belief, and he, and he empowers you by his spirit, then good works are naturally going to flow out of that. So the works become evidence that that belief was real. Uh, James chapter 2 talks about that.